were here at Watkins Glen International at the conclusion of the famed Collier Cup race for MGs. And this is one of those really special days when one of the good guys shines in the rain. And our good friend and a friend of everybody in the MG community, Dick Powers, is here. And tell us about your day, Dick. Well, <laughs> the day started. We weren't sure what the weather was going to be like. They said maybe tornadoes. But uh, the MG guys go out in just about everything. And so when it was time for us to go out, we were ready. We had the cars to go. And we got to the grid, and uh, it was raining pretty hard. And because uh, you never know where your cars are going to go in the rain. <laughs> and uh, I was just blessed to be able to find my way through, get a good line here and there. Had some great races. I, I got to thank a number of my MGA friends for uh, letting me get by and uh, stay in front for a while. So it was a great day. Well, Dick, uh, you're being modest because I know for a fact that uh, uh, a lot of those cars are far, far faster with a lot more money uh, invested in them. And uh, you started pretty far back on the grid. And you passed a lot of drivers. And I know the rain is a great equalizer, and I'd say that uh, you probably drove the race of your life. Now, tell us the real story, Dick. <laughs> the real story is, yeah, I probably did drive the race of my life. And, you know, there's always been somebody up there uh, watching over me in the uh, 18 years I've been racing. And uh, I'm really thankful for that because, especially in the rain, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, the fact that the car was just running beautifully uh, – all race long uh, was a real help, but uh, there are a couple of spots where you know the car is out of shape and you're able to save it, and uh, you just keep going on and on. And uh, whatever the right rain line was, I was just, I would guess I was on it, so I was just happy. You do have a built in advantage because you're a lifelong resident of Rochester, New York, where uh, snow is uh, always the present thing. Honestly, do you think that helps? Uh, Honestly, I do. I've talked to a lot of guys in races, and we've had a lot of all-MG races in the rain. I remember one at Elkhart Lake. It was raining sideways, and we've had a number of tough races here in the rain. And I said, well, you know, when you grow up in the rain and snow and ice, it just becomes part of the seat of your pants, so to speak, and you just have a feel for the car. On the other hand, my car is not super powerful. Uh, it's kind of like it would have been set up back in the 60s, uh, a car you could drive to the track and race, a club racer. So that gave me a little more advantage when I had to get the power down that uh, I didn't spin the tires and stuff. But there, there, I believe there's a lot to, to do with living in, in this kind of climate and just learning how to drive it. Well, also, too, Dick, to your credit, you drove consistently. You've always been a consistent driver and smooth, and I don't recall you ever having an off-track incident or an incident with anybody else, so you, your, your record is, is spotless. Now, I do know that you are clutching two special awards very tightly. At some point, your lovely wife, Bethel, is going to take them out of your hand so you can take her to dinner because there is something else special about this weekend, isn't it, Dick? You said it. Uh, <laughs> my wife says that uh, 40 years ago, I knew the vintage races would, would fall uh, at a special day, and tomorrow is our 40th wedding anniversary. So for about the last 20 years or 25 years, we've always been down here during our wedding anniversary. So, yeah, it's a special day. Today and then tomorrow is just going to put the put the icing on the cake. And I'm hoping uh, tomorrow night you'll be at Seneca Lodge with one of these or both of these beautiful trophies filled with adult beverages for your closest friends. But we <laughs> we do need we do need to discuss, first of all, the trophy in your left hand. Tell us what it's all about. Well, I was very surprised. I actually didn't know where I finished. And uh, when they said I finished third, this is the third overall in the in the Collier Cup race. And then the medallion is for third overall. So I was very surprised uh, to get this. Uh, it's really uh, it just it's wonderful. That is fantastic. It honestly is. And then the a larger trophy there uh, looks like it has a bit of history to it. Uh, could you tell us about the trophy and what it means to you? A uh, trophy means means a lot to me because... Sherm Decker and Bob Booker, if you're an MGA racer, and I hope I can hold it together here. If you're an MGA racer, uh, uh, these guys set the bar very high back in the 50s. And my friend Joe Tierno was lucky to have uh, uh, the uh, uh, former Spanky Smith uh, uh, um, Bob Booker car, uh, 029. Uh, and uh, we've, we just have lived the MG history. And thanks to Namgar, they recognized that... Uh, 
there should be a trophy for this. And I think we did it in 2004 was our first trophy. And so this comes from uh, North American MGA Register, uh, who I'm a member of as well. And um, when you get into the history of MGA's racing here at the Glen, um, the trophy uh, says it all. I mean, it just... Uh, it's just tough, and uh, the names that are on here, uh, I'm just, again, blessed to be on this trophy with some of these guys who I've always looked up to, especially Joe. Well, I don't know about that last comment, but I would say that anybody watching this will really get a good sense of what vintage racing is all about. It's about passion, love of the sport. There's no money. The only money is the money you're spending, and it's very expensive to do. There's no upward ladder. It's just... Especially uh, of all the vintage racers, I firmly believe that the MG people really have their act together. Uh, they rarely have any incidents. Uh, you can ask the organizers about that. And, uh, wow, well, now, Dick, uh, you're coming up on your 20th anniversary of racing. Yeah, well, you got two years to, two years to plan for your 20th anniversary. Now, I know you've been to Laguna Seca, uh, uh, Sebring. Sebring, uh, and Sebring uh, three times we were there because it was also an MGA event, uh, anniversary of the 50th anniversary of the last factory built MGAs. So we had great uh, great racing down there. Uh, uh, as, as I said years ago, I raced at Elkhart Lake as well, mid-Ohio, uh, road at Atlanta, of course, uh, Lime Rock, a place we all get out to. But because of our MG Vintage Racer group, uh, we were able to stage uh, certain focus events, and that really allowed me to race at Laguna one year and uh, at Sears Point a couple of years ago. So I have to give them all the credit for keeping all the MG guys together and just uh, making it fun, you know. It's just something, something that uh, it's hard to put into words, but racing an MG, it's been just a wonderful experience for me. Well, and you're one of the guys that holds it all together by your example, by the way you live and your attitude towards racing, and... And are there any parting comments you'd like to make? No, I guess. Just remember, it's your 40th anniversary. I, I know. I was just going to say, I, uh, as wonderful as it is uh, having, you know, this kind of blessings that come in uh, the race car, uh, I've been blessed because my wife has put up with me <laughs> doing this all these years, and I'm so happy that uh, she could be here for this day. Thank you. Well, that's fantastic. And now our cameraman, Gordy Rustin, is going to put some film in the camera. And now we're going to do it for oh, real. Okay.